SNMP protocol is the protocol that helps you to manage and monitor your device health. That is, memory is too low, CPU is too high, and so on. In an SNMP world, there are three key components. There's the database of object, which is also known as the MIB. There's the SNMP agent, that's the device that you're monitoring. That device can also send what is known as SNMP traps. Those are events that are happening and being sent to the SNMP manager, which can also query the device whenever it wishes. Now, there are different versions of SNMP. The latest is version 3, which is much more secure. It adds up authentication and encryption. So, let's look at it. Alright, so to configure SNMP, you'll move to System, SNMP, and the very first thing that you will see is the databases, the MIB databases. There are two. The first one is a database that is unique to FortiGate, FortiGate firewalls. The second one is a MIB that is uh, that is quite global. It is for every Fortinet device out there. So here you will find objects that are unique to FortiGate. Here you will find objects that are uh, global in the sense that they will fit to every Fortinet device. Now, the thing that we want to do is to configure an SNMP agent. So let's just enable it. Let's describe uh, the SNMP agent. That's a FortiGate um, office. All right location office that's just for uh, content info let's use our admin which is admin dot admin at gmail.com okay now when we configure we can configure either snmp1 and 2 or snmp3 we will configure snmp3 but if you create um, a new configuration on snmp2 uh, you will see that you have what is known as a community a community actually aggregates the devices, but it is not secure. It is only plain text name that anyone actually can use and can take a look at your um, SNMP agent at the different objects or different events. So we will actually use the SNMP version 3, which is a user-based security model that's quite different. So let's add up the name. Let's just name it offer for, um, um, for our demonstration. And the security level can be either no authentication, authentication only, and authentication and privacy. So we will use authentication and privacy. In authentication, we will choose the hash function that will be used uh, to hash our password. Um, Let's use SHA-256, don't use MD5, MD5 is way, way, way old and not secure anymore, so SHA-256 will be quite okay. You can change, of course, the password, let's just um, write down a password. And the second thing is the encryption itself, we need to encrypt the data that is moving between the SNMP agent and the SNMP manager. For that, we will use AES encryption. I'm not sure why Fortinet actually even allows uh, someone to encrypt in DES. Uh, DES is way, way old and not secure anymore. Uh, so choose AES-256. That's, uh, that's a much more secure um, uh, encryption algorithm. And here we also need to choose a password. That's a password. That's another password. That's not the same password as you are using for the authentication side. That's another password that is used for the encryption. All right, now here you will actually enter the IP address of the SNMP manager. So let's just uh, add up an address. And here we um, actually permit our SNMP manager to send queries. Now. Uh, the port is 161. If you have other port that you need to change, change, change it here. The traps are actually the events that your agent sends towards the SNMP manager. And you, uh, you can choose the different events. 
So again, those are the different ports. Those are the default ports that are being used by SNMP either for queries or for traps. And those are the events that you can actually choose to send traps. So CPU usage is high, available memory is low, space, log space is low. Uh, you can even um, send an event whenever a new device comes up uh, and shows up in the network itself or if the um, IPS package is updated. Okay. And that's about it. Now, you will need to add up the credentials, uh, as in the host name, the, uh, the authentication password, the password that is being used for the encryption, and of course, the two MIP files to the SNMP manager.